is so fun to take the piece out of my language every now and then on the question la vita I am a trained classical vocalist. My name is Severine. I am an actor. I am a director. I am a writer. And I am also a world-class famous chef. Welcome to my kitchen. I have already tried filming this video twice, but um... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it didn't work. So I'm doing it again. Today, we're making fritters. Or, as my family calls them, akha. This akha. This akha. It is a recipe that is from Guadeloupe. Guadeloupe is the island where my family is from. It is the French Caribbean. I was going to do this whole video in French. But quite frankly, I know that my mum will cuss me out for all the mistakes that I make. Et aussi, j'ai pas assez de blagues à faire en français. Donc, me voilà! I'm doing it in English and I am really excited because I love this recipe. My granny taught me how to make this. I have already got my ingredients. I just got back from Sainsbury. Ah, ah, ah. Y'all! I went shopping for y'all. I did the groceries for y'all we are making them vegan today listen yeah i know that in the caribbean veganism well where i'm from in the caribbean veganism is not that popular when i told some of my friends and family i was going to be making them vegan some of you lot are disrespectful man you went oh why listen everybody wants to make some good fritters once in their life i'm making them vegan and vegetarian because i got a few vegan and veggie friends who want them too usually akha is made with cod Des acras à la morue. C'est trop bon. Je mange ça à la plage avec ma famille dans le soleil. Et je ne suis plus dans ce pays de merde et la vie va bien. But today we are making them with sweet corn and with peppers. Listen, I'm only going to say this once, yeah? You do not have to use the ingredients that I'm using today. They are optional. If you don't like peppers, don't put peppers in it. If you don't like sweet corn, don't put sweet corn in it. You can, you can do it with carrots. You can do it with... Aubergine? I've seen it done with aubergine. I mean, I'm not a big fan of aubergine, but whatever, do you? I'm not gonna judge you. If you don't like fish, just don't put any fish in it. So, I hope you enjoy. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know what you're doing if this is like your fourth video that you've come back to see and you haven't already subscribed. What's that about? Mm -hmm, shady, but what else? Leave a comment down below letting me know what other recipes you would like me to try. When the world is going mad, nothing makes us feel better than a nice home cooked meal. Right, enough yabbering. It's my dinner time, so let's go make some fritters. I'm not gonna let you have some dry fritters all by themselves. To go with this beautiful recipe, we are also gonna be making a sauce creole or a sauce chien. Our food is seasoned in this household, thank you. I have got here red onion, spring onion, garlic. I've also got some thyme. I use fresh thyme, but if you're like me and you got frustrated halfway through picking off all the leaves or you're just lazy, you can use thyme out of the box. That's totally fine. And I've also got some green chili. The reason that I use green chili is because my red ones I ran out of. I used two green chilies for this one because these ones are not hot, so it's all good. You can also use a scotch bonnet if you want a red hot pepper instead. These ingredients form up the basic foundation for a lot of Caribbean seasoning. It's used a lot to season meat and fish meals as well because all together these ingredients are delicious. We are using sweet corn. I use mine fresh because I had a fresh cob, but you can use packet or tin, doesn't matter, it's still the same. And I've got some red pepper or sweet pepper. We call it sweet pepper in some parts of the Caribbean because Scotch bonnet pepper is the hot pepper. So we call this one 
sweet papa. You can use whatever vegetables you want as the filling. The other thing you can do, if you want like a fishy flavor and you are vegan, you can use nori sheets or seaweed, which is really, really great. Seaweed obviously comes from the sea and it naturally is a plant-based way of adding a sort of fishy flavor given where it comes from. So you can use that if you want to cheat a sort of fishy flavor. We're gonna be using 200 grams of flour. You can use any flour, self-raising or plain, it's up to you because either way we're gonna add some bicarbonate of soda. And we're also gonna use 250 milliliters of water. Ideally, you want your water to be room temperature, not too cold, not too hot, but it's up to you. As long as it's not boiling, you should be fine. And we're also gonna need a wok. I don't know why I did that, like I'm holding one. A walk. A walk. Mine has got a good few centimeters depth. Ooh, hear that echo? Well, the oil I'm going to be using to fry these is sunflower oil. You can use any unflavoured oil that you want. Um, I do not suggest you use olive oil for this because you're not supposed to cook olive oil apparently. When you heat it up, it breaks up the compounds and makes it taste really bitter. So, I use sunflower oil, which is really good. You can also use rapeseed oil. That works really well. We are going to use parsley because we're fancy. We've got shallots. Shallots. Little shallots right there. We have got some garlic, which is hiding somewhere under here. We have got chives, which are just there. We have got spring onion, and we have also got some more thyme, which is great. Again, really similar to the basic seasoning I showed you guys earlier. The other thing we are also gonna use is a bit of lemon, some lemon juice freshly squeezed. If you don't have lemon, you can use white vinegar, will do just fine. Salt, pepper, I've also got some green chili in here. Usually it would be done with scotch bonnet, but like I said, I ran out, I used it in the stew. We're also gonna use some hot water, not very much, like half a cup. Depends on how much of these ingredients you use. That's kind of the basics for sauce chien. That's not true, you are actually also gonna need a little bit of sunflower oil for the sauce chien. I just forgot to mention it, and I'm recording this later when I'm editing, so hi. <laughs> So to mix everything, I'm actually using a whisk. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm either summoning the ancestors to help me season this food properly or I'm just casting a spell. Um, and you're gonna add in the water bit by bit like you can see me doing it here. Very, very tentatively, making sure you're doing it a little bit at a time. Some people dig a hole in the middle of the flour and do it that way, but essentially you're gonna mix it, mix it, whisk it all together. <laughs> Cut the cameras, dead end. I literally, I'm impossible. I just got flour like, oh, oh man. If you pay attention to what you're doing, that will not happen to you. Keep misking, keep, I'm like, why can't I talk? Keep mixing everything together. I need more water. Add water or flour as you go. You might find that you need to adjust. <gasps> that might have been too much. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Ce n'est pas bon. C'est trop mouillé. Il me faut plus de farine. C'est toujours trop mouillé. On ne fait pas des crêpes. On fait des accras. You can never find the stuff these days. Voilà. When you mix it around, it's goopy. Yum. You want it to be not too thick, but not too runny. You want it to stick a little bit to your whisk. I've got all of my seasonings here. Sprinkle them in, just like that. I'm gonna whisk <laughs> those in before I continue. Ooh, this smells so good. It will get thicker at this point, obviously. I'm gonna add in my sweetcorn. Oh, that's probably enough action. I'm also gonna add in my pepper. Okay, this is where you might wanna get a spoon instead of a whisk, so that you're not dealing with what I'm dealing with right now. Yeah, it's much easier to do. 
gonna ah ah I'm gonna put in some salt some salt Normally I would use this stuff. This stuff is Creole spices straight from Guadeloupe. It is so good. It has got thyme, red onion, garlic, salt, pepper, mustard, strong chili, and cumin. So you can probably make something similar at home, but obviously for today, I have ran out. Oh, it still smells so good, man. It is, oh, it's delicious. So I'm using the one from Sainsbury's. Because work with what you've got, it's not every day. In all seriousness though, please do not feel the need to go out to the shops to use the ingredients that I'm using. I would hate it, hate it, hate it if one of you decided to go to the shops because you don't have the exact ingredients that I'm using. So please stay safe. Wear your blood clot mask. Oh yeah. A little bit of hot chili, oh, hot chili powder. Cumin. I like it. You can see how there is flavor in every bite. It's coming off my spoon nicely. It's not too wet, not too dry. It's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be delicious. <laughs> oh my God, it smells so good. <laughs> Make sure that you clean up after yourself. I added a bit of lime with all of the strength that I had inside me, but I'm still weak, so I used a spoon. Um, but yeah, I added some lime to the mixture. I just forgot to mention it earlier. And then you wanna add the oil. That's a centimetre of oil. There. And then it's just a hell amount of waiting. You're basically waiting for it to heat up. You want the oil to be super, super hot for when you are adding in the fritters because that's going to help them hold their shape immediately. And was my seasoning cupboard open this entire time? Well, good thing I closed it. All right, so then you're going to get some spoons and you are going to basically test that the oil is hot enough. The batter should be fizzing immediately when it touches the oil. That's how you know that it's ready. I basically grab a teaspoon amount and I push it in using the other spoon so that it forms these little dollops that are about that big, but they do spread a little bit flat. That's why you want the oil to be really hot so that it immediately helps to hold the shape. And at first, for the first couple batches, I actually gave all of the fritters like enough space to move about in the pan so that they're socially distanced in the pan and doing really, really well, um, following government guidelines and all that. But then later on, I said bun social distancing. No, I didn't say that. Please keep social distancing. Don't, don't. Be safe, all right. So um, later on, I just pushed them all closer together to speed things up a little bit. But at first I sped up and essentially it's that. And then me and my trusty tongs came in to flip the bad boys over. Why do I call them bad boys? Anyway, they look delicious and I'm watching this and drooling because I wish I hadn't eaten them all so quickly. I probably should have moved my camera further away so that I didn't get any oil on it. I got a little bit of oil on the screen, but you can't see that and it still works, so it's fine. But that's essentially it. You just keep adding them. And then when the oil starts getting crazy, I put my little oil guard in front of it and started running away like I did when my mum would be cooking by the stove when I was a kid. I feel like all of those videos that are going around on TikTok and Instagram at the minute, where they're like me when I'm cooking. Ah! But my mum put the oil everywhere. <laughs> I survived. Look at this. Look how beautiful. Oh, are you kidding me? Look how scrumptious. This is the first batch. Mm. These are really hot still. Try to find like one that's cooled down. I'm so excited. Let's try one of these. Mm. Mm. Spicy, but also really refreshing. Woo cha! Oh I got the seasoning right too. Not too much salt. Go me. Mm. Make sure that you line whatever plate or container you're gonna um, put the fritters on with some tissues or some napkin because we don't wanna be just eating oil. And while that's cooking, we're gonna cook the sauce chien. So it's really, really easy. You're essentially mixing together all of the ingredients that I told you. So started off by putting all of the spices in there and then I'm gonna add in the salt and the pepper. 
Um, any other seasoning that you want to add at this point, go ahead. I add in just a little bit of boiling water to really help all of the herbs and flavors steep and go real nice. Add it in my lemon juice, make sure that you take out the seeds and then you mix it around. Um, mix it around and essentially you're going to leave it to sit. I added in a little bit of oil at this point just to help everything marinate together. And here you can see me adjusting a lemon for the aesthetic. Um, yeah, trying to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Mix it about a little bit more, adjust the seasoning as you want, and it's ready. Fun fact, actually, sauce chien is called sauce chien because the brand of knives that was used to cut all of the herbs really thinly when the recipe was originally invented was called le couteau de chien. So that's where the name comes from. We are down to the last one. Now you gotta dish them up, dish them all up. Ooh, girl, they look so good. Let me not lie. I'm looking at this and I'm like, mm. Mmm, I want some more. <laughs> well guys, thank you so, so much for watching this video. That is all I have for you guys today. Um, bit of a fun cooking video because it, I, I felt like it. It's my channel, I'm gonna do what I want. So, thank you so much for watching it. If you wanna see any more of these recipes, let me know. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, share it about, let everybody know to try this recipe out. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.